Hello guys, welcome to Counter Drawing. My name is Manuel and I'm back with another tutorial. And today's tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you how to shade. Now, this is something that a lot of people have been requesting recently. A lot of people have been asking me, like, uh, how do I shade? Or, you know, when it comes to the drawing, I'm fine. But when it comes to the shading, I'm not exactly sure what to do. But to be honest, I don't think I am the, the best person to be asking this because I don't consider myself to be some kind of professional artist but I can teach you what I what I know and what I've learned over the years and you know the the way that I approach things and the way that I do things that I have been doing for for the past years and, the, um, and they've actually worked for me and that's pretty much what I can teach you alright so hopefully this, this tutorial is as complete as I can okay I'm gonna make it as complete as possible so you guys can pretty much get the best out of you know pretty much shading now in this tutorial i'm gonna be teaching you guys different techniques okay both in anime and manga drawings and in real uh, realistic drawings okay and you know to perfect any of the techniques that i'm gonna show you guys or any technique in general you have to practice okay now i can't teach you the way that i do the shading but i can't teach you uh, how to practice because so what you guys sh pro should probably do is like after watching this tutorial is you know try your best to make as many drawings as you can because that is pretty much the way that you're gonna get good at something is to pretty much practice okay in this tutorial I'm not going to like draw anything detailed or like anything fancy okay and to be honest I don't uh, exactly know how long this video is gonna take it's probably gonna take forever <laughs> but because you know I have a lot of things to cover and uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna try my best to make this video as complete as possible okay alright so let's talk about shading okay now there are a lot of different things that uh, to keep in mind when it comes to shading okay um, but there are two most important things that I that I thought like there are two things that I think are most important when it comes to shading okay now the first thing that you have to keep in mind is volume now what is volume volume is like making the drawing like pop out okay like like the 3d kind of mention like for example if you're drawing a ball make sure the ball looks round and not just a flat drawing okay now that's what I'm talking about when it comes to volume and the second thing is contrast the thing that most people struggle with is contrast because because it's something that I normally see like very often like people make that mistake what they do is like for example when they draw a portrait what they do is like they use the same tone all around the whole portrait what they don't understand is that there is there are different kind of tones okay like from the dark to light okay and you know that's something that, that a lot of people sh struggle with and is something that I, I think you should probably keep in mind when you're pretty much shading anything okay all right so as I mentioned in the beginning what I'm gonna do is I am going to teach you how to shade both in manga or anime or cartoons and uh, realistic drawings all right so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus more on the kind of anime cartoon shading okay but if you're in this tutorial because you're you're looking for more like realistic kind of shading so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the time right about here so you guys can skip ahead and uh, so you guys can so you, you you guys don't have to listen to all of this okay so pretty much what do you like the the first thing that you probably have to keep in mind when it comes to anime or manga shading is that um they work in layers okay now what i mean what i mean by this is that you know there's like kind of a like dark mid-tone and light tone they're mostly like three layers all right like three to two layers are the ones that you know are most common uh, and you know there's uh, there's also a clear separation between each of them okay so that's something that you have to keep in mind is that between each tone there's a clear separation between them okay there's a dark tone a mid tone and a, and a light tone okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you two of the techniques that I usually use okay and I think are the most common uh, techniques uh, when it comes to anime or manga shading okay now the first technique uh, that I'm talking about is uh, cross hatching okay now I, I think most of you cross hatching I think most of you already know uh, how cross hatching works all right but I this is pretty much the technique that I pretty much use almost all the time when it comes to like manga uh, drawings okay and you know uh, cross hatching actually works like the most common 
um, place where you're gonna see cross hatching is in manga okay now how do you no uh, normally do cross hatching I think you guys already know how to do it is pretty much just draw straight lines okay the lines don't have to be wobbly and pretty much just draw like uh, lines that are, that are going different directions and just draw them on top of one another now if you want the kind of the the shading to be darker you, all you have to do is just add extra extra lines okay and this is pretty much how you do cross hatching is just draw straight lines do not make them wobbly just draw them as quickly as you can so that is pretty much how to cross hatch and you know I'm just gonna go show you guys an example on uh, cross hatching here I'm just gonna draw a quick drawing because the 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 place where you normally see cross hatching the most is usually like under the neck so I'm going to show you guys how I usually cross hatch the first thing that I normally do is just you know add a base tone okay that is what I normally do first just draw a line that is going one direction and then you know draw another line that is going like I mean other lines that are going another different direction just like that okay and what I normally like to do is to like um, have a clear separation between the neck and the shading so what I would do is like add as you can see I added a line here just so you understand so, so the there's a like a clear separation between them all right now if you want the shading to be a lot more darker what you can do is just you know add more shading all right just like that it just I think it's pretty much straightforward here it's not it's not something very very complicated uh, but what I like to do sometimes is to like as I mentioned before contrast is really important so what I normally do is I usually like make a another layer here like right underneath the neck like really really dark like almost pure dark here and I think it, it usually uh, like helps to show that you know the, the kind of it I think it like richens a little bit the shading uh, it's just the way that I do things okay it doesn't mean that it's, it's you know the way to do things I'm just showing you the way that uh, that I think shading can help you alright so this is how I normally cross hatch okay now it, as I mentioned also you uh, sh you also have to focus on the on the volume alright so for example if you're drawing a ball and you want to use cross hatching what you want to do is um, I'm, I'm just I just draw a, a quick circle here what you want to do is first of all you want to draw lines that are going pretty much the direction of of the ball first okay I think you understand what I'm trying to say so just so that the we can get the shape now this this drawing is not any is not perfect or anything I'm just showing you okay how I normally do things just like this and what you're gonna do next is just just draw after after that I think you can just draw random lines on top of that because once you've already drawn the like the main the main what do you call this like the main lines there that are going there it, that helps you to you know get a feel on how the ball is and that usually helps you to get that shape so if you're gonna add random lines on top of it I don't think it's gonna affect so I think that is pretty much how you're going to get that um, kind of circular um, shape, okay? And as I mentioned before, there you have to make things look clean. So what I normally do is I, you know, just try your best. I mean, be, before you draw the cross hatching, what you can do is just draw some lines here, just so it guides you not to uh, overpass it. Just like that, okay. So just so you at least you understand how the things go, the thing goes, okay. So pretty much this is how I usually cross hatch, and this is how I usually uh, I generate cross hatching. All right, so we've pretty much talked about the cross hatching. Now we're going to go to another uh, method that I also use, and I'm just gonna call it like tones, okay, kind of tones method. All right, and this works more in like anime, okay, rather than manga. <clears throat> and what does this means? What this means is that you know, it's like first of all, there's gonna be a tone. We're not gonna work with with lines anymore. All right. So what I what I mean by that is you know is pretty much uh, have a base tone like this, and then there's gonna be like a clear separation between one tone 
and the other just like that okay now I, th I think you guys have seen me like use this method a lot in uh, my recent tutorials because I think because I've, I draw a lot of portraits so I think that this usually uh, like this method like have already stuck with me so I, I, I'm already kind of used to this method but what I normally do is I usually add a base tone alright and then after adding the base tone I usually add a darker tone here alright so there's like a kind of a clear separation between them okay now this is the black and white method this also works um, with um, color alright I'm gonna give you guys an example here like for example if you're trying to draw like uh, like make some kind of skin tone or something first of all what you want to do is like add the base tone just like that and then after you've added the base tone you, you what you're gonna do is you're gonna add the um, like the the shading okay uh, now there's as you can see here there's like a clear separation between the the main tone and the the skin tone okay so that is something that you want to keep in mind when you're um, doing kind of the tones method okay the way I call it <laughs> so yeah this is pretty much the methods that I normally use for cartoons or manga or anime and you know uh, one thing that I probably should mention is that you know these are like two uh, tones I mentioned before that there's also three tones you can make another darker tone after this if you want to okay to make things pop out a little bit more it really does depend on you okay this is I'm just this is I'm just showing you the way that I normally do things it doesn't mean that you know this is the way to do things you can variate and you know experiment and all that you can add and all everything okay this is not the like the main way to do things okay so this is pretty much the way that I normally uh, approach anime and manga drawings so what I'm gonna do now is go straight to the realistic drawings alright so this is the part where most people have trouble the most okay because you know this we're trying to achieve a realistic look we're not trying to we're not this is not cartoons cartoons are really easy to do but still you need to practice at it but I'm just saying that is more complicated and I understand that a lot of people have uh, troubles with realistic shading so what I'm, I'm just gonna call it real realism okay realism shading um yeah um I, as i mentioned before there are a lot of people that have troubles with this because you know it is harder and takes more practice to to perfect all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna show you an example of how i usually do things okay now the first thing that I normally do is I usually add a, ba a base layer just like this and what I normally use to to like smudge everything I normally use a blending stump okay but a lot of people have different ways to do it you know this isn't the only way to like smudge the whole thing around but I usually use a blending stump and I actually have different sizes here for you know kind of different circumstances for example if the the area is really big I really use this big one but if the area is like really really tiny like the eye place for example I really use a really tiny one you don't actually have to use this like there are a lot of people that that use different stuff like for example my first portrait that I did here on the channel I actually use like a, what do you call it a tissue paper all right to to make the portrait so you know you don't have to get this if you don't have it I'm just saying that you can use the things that you have at home. I also, um, you can also make a custom blending stump with newspapers. I've actually used that for quite a while. Newspapers. If you want, I can leave a tutorial in the description so you guys can go check out how to do that. But yeah, that is pretty much how I shade. So yeah, as you can see here, what I did is I smudged it first, and what I normally do is I go to the dark tones, okay, and gradually try my best to like reach uh, this tone right here that we currently have and you know after doing that you're just gonna smudge it again okay just like this all right and you know if it's not the way that you want to you you're just going to you have to you know go on top of it again all right until you get the desired gradient all right and as I mentioned before you know um, contrast is uh, really important so what you want to do is try your best to 
to half contrast okay now what I normally do is I have I have different tons of uh, sizes of uh, pencils like the I have I think the darkest one that I have is an 8B okay and the lightest one I think is like 2 acre or, or something that I have but what I'm trying to say is that you can have different pencils all right so that you have more options in terms of darkness and don't limit yourself to just having one single pencil I'm not saying that you can't make a, an awesome portrait with one pencil but I'm just saying that if you want to achieve a level of, uh, a level of contrast you, you probably should uh, have different kind of pencils and as you can see here what we did here is we added a, a gradient okay as, as you can see I did not get it the first time what you want to do is like go on top of it and on top of it until you get the desired gradient and you know if you wanted to like blend into the white of the paper what I normally use is a uh, like a pencil eraser or something that has two different erasers this one is more kind of harsh okay once you do is like for example if you want to add highlights you know it's really good for highlights but this one is more kind of a gradient eraser that usually is very helpful in terms of you know adding gradients so if you want to like this as I mentioned this takes a lot of practice okay so you know what you want to do is like gently you know go go to this to the lightest part and try your best to get the the desired gradient from the dark right to the white of the paper now this is something that takes a lot of practice and I don't expect you to get it like the first day so you have to practice to be able to get that loose uh, loose hand okay to, um, whenever it comes to like uh, adding gradients now the one thing that you should probably keep in mind whenever you're drawing any portraits okay is that we are not working with cartoons okay they do not work in layers so no matter how uh, simple the shading is or how small there's always going to be a gradient okay no matter how small it is so what you want to do is try your best to make everything look kind of uh, gradient okay if for example let's say we have this tiny thing to shade okay there's going to be like a tiny gradient but as you can see I, I would use the um, the small one here because it's easier to use all right but there's always going to be a gradient and try your best not to have like the tones like separate okay as the um, the ones in the anime so try your best this takes a lot of practice as I mentioned okay so you know try your best to get it okay and practice as much as you can to be able to get the uh, desired gradient all right just like that and once you've done that you can go inside it you can you can go with the, the eraser here and and you know if it's too dark you can go in and uh, erase softly so there's a, kind of a gradient thing what I also use other than the blending stump is um, I usually also use a brush all right to you know make the thing kind of uh, a tone here so you know if you have a brush I think everybody has some kind of a watercolor brush or something to help you because I think that the brush gives more of a smooth look okay as you can see more of a kind of gradient look so you know it really helps in like faces for example it really gives a very smooth transition from the shading or if, if you want if you don't really want a very, very harsh shading what you can do is go with the with the brush and it actually helps smooth it out so you know if you have a brush laying around somewhere it will help you a lot to a uh, to be able to get that um uh, smooth gradient that you're looking for okay so yeah this is basically the way that I normally do things uh, I don't think I have any other techniques any special techniques but this isn't the way that I normally um, draw I mean shade um, and draw portraits or you know how I normally shade my uh, my drawings so let me know what you guys think if this tutorial was helpful to you and if you guys thought it was helpful please share it with other people if this tutorial helped you it will definitely 
help other people and let me know what you guys thought if you liked it if you liked it please give it a big thumbs up guys it really helps me a lot to know that you like you guys are liking my videos and yeah thank you all for liking commenting sharing and subscribing remember to do what you love never stop drawing and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye